Today's video sponsor is GVG More, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, I should game plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. First of all, I just want to say sorry for taking so much time at, or at least more time than usual making this video. And the reason is that these drivers bring way more new things, more new and different things than the, the ones that are stated in the release notes. So yeah. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> Today we have the video of the 23.7.1 drivers and as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year 2023, 7 is the month July and 1 is the revision in that, in that same month, so the first revision of July. And after one month, one whole month without any kind of driver, any kind of official driver, uh, well, we have one now, 23.7.1. And first of all, let's start with the release notes. We have the highlights with support for additional Vulkan extensions. Click here for more information. And I did! We have cooperative matrix for Raiden RX 7000 series, ray tracing position fetch for the Raiden RX 6000 series and newer, and we have also Vulkan things for decode and encode with both H.264, which is AVC, and H.265, which is AGVC, amongst other things like video QE, decode QE, a dynamic rendering, unused attachments, and so on, so lots of new things in the Vulkan department. As for the fixed issues, we have certain virtual reality games or applications may encounter suboptimal performance or occasional stuttering on Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs. And this is one of the most annoying issues that uh, users, the RDNA3 users, have been having. Certain VR games were running very, very poorly. Now, it seems that it isn't fixed for everyone, it is on the fixed issues, yes, but it isn't fixed for, every, for everyone. According to the, to the comments that I've been reading so far, some people did have an improved performance on these new drivers, uh, but it isn't fixed according to, to the 6000 series, for example. In some scenarios, the 6000 series are still faster than the 7000 series, but in other scenarios, it has been improved quite a lot with the 7000 series finally being faster than the previous ones, which is very nice. So uh, in the, maybe in the future drivers, it will keep improving till it gets to the point where it should be from the beginning. The second fixed issue is application crash or driver timeout may be observed during video playback of AV1 video content using DaVinci Resolve Studio. So people having issues with DaVinci Resolve and AV1 must or may have this issue fixed. Now this is a good one. Improvements to high idle power when using select 4K 144Hz FreeSync enabled displays or multi-monitor display configurations such as 4K 144Hz or 4K 120Hz plus 1440p 60Hz displays using Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs. And this is very, very interesting and they kind of claimed it is fixed, but they are claiming it is fixed on these particular settings when on multi-monitor displays. So they are saying it is fixed on single monitors, but in terms of dual or triple monitors, most likely in, in dual monitors like they state here, it is only fixed for scenarios with 4K 144 or 120 plus a 1440p monitor on the mix. If you have anything different from this, it won't most likely be fixed, but it can be, but it most likely won't. In my case, for example, with the 6750 XT that I got from ASRock, that you can see the unboxing here, in that card, in that specific card, in my scenario, with the 23.5.1 drivers, I would actually have around like 30 watts power draw in idle, while with the 23.7.1, I have 6 watts. So even for the older generation cards, it was kind of fixed in the, in the single monitor scenarios, at least for most people. In dual monitor scenarios though, it isn't fixed as I have a, four, a 4K 160Hz plus um, 2K 165Hz and it is still having uh, 30 watts. But I mean, it's dual monitor so it's kind of acceptable. Now, on single one, it wasn't and 6 watts is much, much better than before. Good job. Intermittent corruption may be observed playing WWE 2K23 on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XTX, 
Good fix, by the way. And the last fix is intermittent corruption may be observed after switching windows while playing Neo 2 on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6800 XT, so another fixed issue. And as always, since this is not just all cotton candies, unicorns and la la land, there are some known issues as well. The first one is application crash may be intermittently observed while playing RuneScape on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 5700 XT. Intermittent corruption may be observed around some player models while playing Atsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix Plus, that's a big name, on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 6900 XT. Stuttering may be observed while playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 with Raiden Anti-Lag enabled. As a temporary solution, users encountering this are recommended to disable the Anti-Lag in the per-game settings. So if Anti-Lag is causing problems, disable Anti-Lag. Great solution. <laughs> Having the issues in the Known Issues part on the Known Issues tab is actually a good thing because it means AMD is working on them. If they aren't even presented, it means that AMD may not even know that they exist. But if they are indeed on the known on the known issues list, it means that AMD is working on them and that we will most likely have a fix in the following drivers, which is actually once again a good thing. Performance metrics overlay may report NA for FPS on various games. Display signal may be lost after switching windows on certain adaptive sync enabled displays on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XDX, a bummer. And the last one is higher than expected GPU memory utilization when using certain record and stream settings such as instant replay, something that's pretty annoying actually and AMD actually acknowledges the issue now and they will most likely be working on it, which once again is a good thing. And now that we know the release notes, let's go to the goods and the bads that I found in these drivers, the 23.7.1, the sorry. But before, today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So the first good one is that CRU finally works. So on the 23.5.1 and 23.5.2 and any driver below that, CRU custom resolution utility does not work with the RX 7000 series because the drivers did not have included the EDIF files for the RX 7000 series, meaning that the program, the software, the CRU could not edit those. Meaning that, for example, like me, that I like to overclock or at, or at least change the free sync range with custom resolution utility, I could not do it for the RX 7000 series. But with a 23.7.1, I can. Another good thing is that VR finally got better, not fixed, but better for some people. The idle power issue also got better, once again not completely fixed, but AMD is actually working on it and it is much better than before, much better. And now the interesting thing starts. So we have a new installer compression method. When installing the previous drivers, they would actually ask you to extract the files and they would create a file on the CAMD folder, okay? They would create the folder if it didn't exist before and then they would create a folder with the drivers in that same folder, the C. AMD. On the new drivers on the 23.7.1 we do have a new compression method and they just uncompress to that same folder but then the drivers automatically delete the folder they created and, uh, and the compression method is just much faster than before much faster so it actually uh, allows you to install the drivers faster because the compression method is way faster uh, and it will automatically delete the, the folder in order for your disk to not be full okay after lots of driver versions. That's actually an interesting thing and that's how the 23.7.1 drivers now work. The adrenaline settings also got revamped. I mean, they didn't got revamped per se, they just started using the, the Windows Store software, the Windows Store adrenaline settings on the official on the official drivers as well. Now, instead of having two different panels, we have the same exact panel with the 23.7.1 drivers for all GPUs, having you download the, the drivers from AMD or using the Windows Store panel. It's exactly the same. Some of the different things are basically a grayer look on the new Windows Store layout, 
We also have different menus now separated, for example, instead of having the display and graphic settings on the settings menu, we now have the display and graphic settings on the gaming menu and we do have the recording settings on the recording menu instead of having them all separated in the settings menu. So before we had the settings menu with all those settings and now they are separated for their respective menus, which in my opinion is actually better. It is better because if you are looking for display and graphic settings, it makes sense that it is on the gaming part. And if you're looking, for example, for the recording settings, it does make sense that they are on the recording tab instead of having everything on the, um, on the settings tab and then having tabs inside those tabs. It just makes no sense. And in my opinion, this layout is much better. This layout is much better. And alongside that, we have smoother animations, meaning that the animations have more FPS and they look smooth in high refresh panels, high refresh rate panels. And I appreciate that. Thank you, kind sir. Oh, and these drivers also fixed an issue with the first driver boot after installation. So in some of the previous driver versions with some GPUs, not all, the driver wouldn't automatically start after the first installation and you just had to go to the start, to the taskbar and just select adrenaline settings and so on. And after they ran the, the first time, they would automatically boot up at every reboot or window start. In this case, it is fixed as well and uh, the drivers, at least in the cards that I tested, the, the 6750 XT and the 7900 XTX, the software just booted up normally with no issues. So another good thing. And the final and bonus good thing is that Forza Horizon 5's performance is actually fixed with these drivers, okay? Uh, I don't really know if the, um, if the drivers were the ones fixing the, the problem or if it was a game update. But I do know that I tested several and several driver versions with the 7900 XTX on Forza Horizon 5 and the performance was poor. The performance was even worse than the 6950 XT. And that's one of the reasons, uh, I, I actually have videos showing that performance uh, with, for example, the 7900 XT performing the same as the RX 6800 in Forza Horizon 5. Um, so yeah, that's the bonus good thing. If you're playing uh, Forza Horizon 5 with an RDNA 3 card right now, it works much better. As for the bad things, the only thing that I actually found was that the, um, well, that we had lower 1% lows on the RX 7900 XTX in Cyberpunk 2077. So I do believe that in some games we might have lower 1% lows or slightly lower 1% lows. In other games like Modern Warfare 2, it was completely equal the performance in between both drivers, the um, even the preview drivers. Uh, but in some scenarios, according well, comparing to the previous ones like the 23.5.2 and 23.5.1, in some scenarios, you might have slightly lower performance. But at the same time, you have many, many things that are better, in my opinion. Uh, the stability has been fine, no blue screens, no black screens. And if you're having blue screens and, and black screens, it might actually be due to your overclocking settings not being 100% stable with this driver version. While testing things, if you are having blue screens and so on, do not test things with your overclock settings. Test things at stock and then try your overclocking settings. If the computer then goes black screen, blue screen and so on, you do know now that the overclocking settings are the issue and you have to tweak them for this specific driver version, okay? That's, that's all. It. And well guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Also, I already finally, I already finally finished the 40 games benchmark on the RX uh, 4060, the RTX 4060, sorry. RX 4060 would be a new car, new and interesting car. But the RTX 4060, eight gigabytes, obviously. And I already tested the 40 games for the gameplay, uh, for the gameplay benchmarks. And after that, I will have the normal benchmarks comparing the 3060 versus the 4060 versus the 7600 XT, as some of you requested. And as always, leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about these drivers, your experience with these drivers, because that matters a lot and also helps with the algorithm as well. Quite, quite true as well. And the, the miner keeps turning off. But anyway, leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And thank you very much for watching these videos. Thank you and see you in the next one.